guys, I'm gonna go ahead and rec hit record now. We are recording. I'm gonna take this to full screen. And uh, like I said, guys, if you have any questions, just jump right on in, okay? You have to turn your uh, speaker on. So, first things first. You guys are going to be flying out of Tulsa International Airport with American Airlines. Um, it's with American Airlines and Iberia Airlines, uh, the Spanish uh, company. So um, American Airlines is doing the first leg, and then Iberia is taking over after that. Um, you're going to need to be at the Tulsa International Airport at 11.30 a.m. on, let me write this here, excuse me, May 22nd, okay? May 22nd, 11.30 a.m. Your flight is at 1.45 p.m. I need you guys to make sure you get there two hours prior to departure so that way you have adequate time to get through um, security, um, you know, and um, make sure you have time. A little bit of cushion in case there's any kind of unforeseen uh, um, you know, um, traffic, et cetera, along the way. You might sleep in or whatever. Build in a little cushion so you don't have to um, you don't have to rush on your um, on your travel day. Okay, so uh, make sure you get in at 11:30 a.m. And guys, you don't need to take notes right now. I'm going to email you all of this information. I'll send you electronic. So. Just uh, if you want to write down questions you have, that's fine. But other than that, just relax, and then I'm going to send you all of this. So your flight plan, you're going to fly from Tulsa to Charlotte, Charlotte to Rome, okay? It'll be an overnight flight. Um, you'll arrive in uh, Rome the next morning at 9.45 a.m. Uh, Francesco, uh, definitely uh, Italy's number one guide in my opinion. He will be waiting for you at the airport. Um, you guys are in the best hands possible. Francesco is absolutely brilliant. Um, he's hysterical. He's a ton of fun, and um, he's Roman. He he knows Rome in and out. You guys are going to see so many incre incredible things. Um, you're definitely in the best hands possible. So um, you'll really enjoy that. I promise you. Um, but yeah, so it'll be an overnight flight, guys. You're going to arrive on May 23rd in Rome, 9:45 in the morning. And then we'll go get checked in. You guys can um, relax, refresh, and then um, and then we'll do a little orientation walk that afternoon. And then that evening we'll have the welcome dinner. We won't do anything too intense on the first day. You know, we won't do any like really in depth uh, historical walking tours or visit any monuments or anything because at this point, you know, towards the end of the day, you guys have been awake for thirty plus hours. So. Um, it's uh, we take it easy the first day. We want you to get you comfortable, get you you know used to your uh, new surroundings, and uh, you know definitely uh, we'll make sure that you're uh, nice and caffeinated. So um, Italy has incredible coffee, either espressos you know throughout the day or cappuccino in the morning, however you prefer. But uh, incredible coffee, uh, we'll make sure that you guys are awake, and then uh, we won't let you sleep that first day. But uh, when it comes around to the evening. Um, you'll have the best night's rest ever. Yeah, you want to try to stay awake as long as possible so that way in the um, um you know, you can have a solid night's rest otherwise you won't get on the um the clock. Italy's 7 hours ahead, guys. So um USA 7 hours if you're on central time, um 7 hours ahead, okay? Guys, after and then coming back on the on June first, um, you guys have a flight. It's very early that morning. It's seven forty five, so we have to get you the, we have to get you to Fumoncino at five forty five in the morning. So take it easy that night before. Don't don't go out too late or you know party too hard. Having a hangover and on a flight is awful. So try to take it easy. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll get up bright and early, get you to the airport, say goodbye, and then you'll be on your way. Um, a little different flight plan, Rome, Madrid, Madrid, Chicago, Chicago, Tulsa. I'm sorry about that extra leg there, but, um, all of the flights were, um, were extremely booked up. I'm not sure why on June 1st, but, um, we, uh, we had difficult getting a, a shorter flight. So, uh, that won't be a little bit longer, but you'll be back home in Tulsa 7 PM. Okay. Guys, um, <clears throat> There's different record locators below here. So um, if you'll see, you see your name. Uh, the, there's one, two, three, four, five, five travelers under the first record locator. Um, what you're gonna need to look for is the one that says American Airlines record locator. Okay, that K X V B O R. That is what you will give to the American Airlines desk at the Tulsa airport. 
and they will issue you your boarding passes, okay? Now for uh, Lindsay and Taylor, you guys are on the same flight, but you have a different record locator. Um, again, it's uh, right there under there. So th this is the six, the six letters that you need to take with you along with your passport to the airport. And then the same as we go down, um, Christy has a, you have a, you have a different rec record locator also. Don't worry, everybody's on the same flight, just uh, three different record locators. Okay, let's cruise on, guys. I am going to challenge you, and I am going to encourage you to carry your luggage on the plane with you. Flying over to Italy, please do not check your bag on the plane. Okay. I wanted you to carry your bag on the plane for two reasons. One, it's going to allow us to get out of the airport a lot sooner. Second reason is you know exactly where your bag is the entire flight. So you have one bag that's above your head in the overhead um, um, compartment, and then you have an additional backpack or a messenger bag or whatever you have under your seat, under your seat right there. Right, you know exactly where you're exactly where you're supposed to wear that. You don't have to worry about being delayed, delayed. You don't have to worry about being lost in transit, transit, anything like that. Anything like you know exactly where it is. You have it with you. You get out, get out of the airport real quick. Now, obviously, when you're going back home, definitely you can check a bag on at this point. At this point, if your bag's delayed by a day, two days, whatever, it's not a big deal. You have supplies at home. You'll be fine. You probably maybe have some uh, bottles of wine that you want to check on or some other souvenirs, whatever you might have. This is the time to, to check your bag on. But flying over, I want you to carry your bags on the plane, okay? Now, if you um, have, for example, liquid medication and it can't it can't be transferred into smaller bottles that can go in a carry-on size, and it's a big liter bottle or something, then obviously you don't have to carry your bag on. You're going to have to check your bag on. But unless you are in that situation with liquid medication, then there's really no reason for you to check your bag on going over. Okay. If you are bringing more things uh, on the trip than will fit in a carry-on size bag, you have for sure overpacked. Okay, so you're allowed two bags. I'll show you those bags here in a second, and um, you can see kind of you know how much actual things you're able to bring. Here are the dimensions, guys. You can go through these later if you're worried that your bag might be um, a little bit too big or whatever. Get out the measuring tape, measure it, and you'll be good to go. If you're extra worried and you live close to the airport, you can go by the airport to the departures area. You can put your bag inside of the little metal crate and you can make sure it fits. Now, if your bag's like an inch longer or inch wider than what's listed here, don't worry. These are only suggestions. The airport staff is not going to sit there and measure your bag, okay? You can squeeze it in. Worst case scenario, if you get into the plane, you realize that your bag is not fitting properly, they're going to do a gate check. So they'll mark your bag, they'll put it below the plane, and then when you get off of the plane, they'll hand you your bag back, okay? Still a better option than checking your bag on. So guys, please follow those recommendations. You can definitely do it. I never check my bag on unless I'm bringing back some kind of um, wine or alcohol or something like that, okay? Because you can't bring it on the plane. Um, and I go on four or six week trips sometimes. You guys can definitely do this on a two week trip. You guys can definitely pack carry on, okay? That's what I recommend for you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to challenge you to do that. Please go for that, okay? Now, Guys, these are examples of some bags that um, that you uh, you know. These are kind of ideal bags, all right. Now, if you have a carry-on size um, uh, suitcase, right, a rolling suitcase, and that's what you prefer, not a problem. Bring it. Just make sure it's not one of those six-month huge suitcases that's uh, really unnecessary for um, a two-week trip. Okay. Um, another reason I don't like the rolly bags is because you're in Rome, where it's nothing but cobblestone. Okay. Those bags can be awful on cobblestone. It's just rattling the entire time. One of the wheels pops off. You're dragging your bag. I prefer to have the bag on my back or around my shoulder with like a sling strap um, sports bag like this one. Okay. So um, basically, guys, these are just examples. Um, either like a nice backpacking bag like this one. Um, this is the bag I use personally on the top left. This bag, I can pack for four to six weeks with this bag. 
Um, right here on the right, if you've got like, if you have a sports bag, if you're friends, your family, guys, before you go and buy a brand new bag, talk to your loved ones, talk to your friends, talk to your family and say, Hey, can I borrow that sports bag? Or, Hey, do you have a backpacking bag or I can borrow? Or, Hey, do you have a little rolling carry on suitcase? Right? So before you go spend money, see what's available, uh, you know, for free, right? Um, both of these bags on top work very well for this type of trip. Um, and then below you have kind of your day pack options. So you might have a little backpack to keep on you, or you might have a larger purse or, you know, shoulder bag or something like that for the ladies or backpack either way. Um, guys, these smaller packs are going to be your day packs. These are going to be the ones that you're, uh, that you have your, your map in your water bottle in your uh, camera, your, you know, snacks, whatever you got throughout the day. This is going to be the bag that you're walking around in Rome and Florence with. Okay. You're not going to be bringing your big bags. Those are going to be locked up back in the, uh, back in the hostel in the dorm room. Okay. So, um, we'll go over packing here in a second, but these are kind of the bags that you should be looking for. Don't bring massive suitcases. Okay. Um, sample packing list. This is going to be different for everyone, okay? But these are just uh, suggestions, recommendations. So we say uh, we've already covered the bags. You know, you need a big bag, you need a small bag. Nice and easy. You need adequate uh, clothing for the duration of the trip. Guys, um, I want you to check the weather before going. Look at the averages. But most likely you're looking at lower 80s, okay? Like um, into May, June, probably starting to get up into the mid 80s. Rome is typically warm, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, you're not going to need really heavy clothes. Um, lighter clothes, the better. Um, you might need a light, thin jacket in case there's some rain or some cooler evenings or whatever. But you're definitely not going to need, um, you know, heavy, heavy clothing, multi layer clothing, things that you can. Uh, you know, layer if you need to take off if you get hot, put on if you get cold, and you know, bring versatile clothing. Bring clothes that you can wear with multiple outfits. Bring clothes that uh, you know, you can wear multiple times. You don't need to bring a different outfit for every single day, in my opinion. Okay, um, obviously that's up to you, but um, you know, I like to pack as light as possible. Plus, you're in Italy. There's tons of great shop in there, so you know, if you are looking for something, um, I would try to avoid the designer clothes. It's gonna be very expensive, but um, you know, uh, there's lots of other great options too. So, um, jeans, pants, a couple pairs would be good. Um, guys, if uh, if we have guys listening right now in the meeting, uh, Italian guys don't really wear shorts. They wear jeans. They wear pants. Um, obviously, um, you know, you can wear shorts, no problem. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're trying to look like a local, um, yeah, they don't wear shorts. So you're going to wear jeans or pants. Okay. Um, but obviously if you like cargo shorts, wear your cargo shorts. Okay. Um, evening wear something to wear out. Francesco, I know for sure will want to take you guys out in the evening. So he'll probably want to take you guys to some pubs or to some local hangout spots, probably even a discotheque. So, uh, bring something, you know, something cute, something nice that you might want to wear out. If you were going to go to, um, to the Italian bar or you're going to go to, um, you know, we're, we're going to be, you have three included dinners. So we're going to, you need to have something to wear that evening. It doesn't need to be fancy. Okay doesn't need to be fancy, but something different than what maybe you were wearing all day walking around six, 12 miles in. Okay. Um, you know, and plus Italians, they like to, you know, Italians like to dress nice. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. You might want to bring something, you know, cute and nice to wear out in the evening. Um, guys, you need to bring, um, appropriate pajamas. Okay. We're staying in, um, shared dorms. So the girls from our program will be in a room together. The guys from our program will be in a room together. Make sure that the pajamas that you bring are appropriate. Okay. For shared uh, dormitories, uh, flip flops for showering. That's my number one rule. If it's not my shower, I'm wearing flip flops. Okay. So uh, it's just good hygiene. Bring some flip flops. Also, there'll be opportunities for you guys to go to the beach. Um, you know, you can go to Ostia or you can go to the beach while you're in Tuscany as well near Florence, about an hour and a half out. So uh, if you do decide you want to go to the beach on your free day, some flip flops might be nice. Guys, durable, multi purpose, comfortable shoes, okay? Please do not bring brand new shoes, walking shoes over to Italy and put them on day one and you've never broken them in. Okay. It's the worst idea ever. You're going to get blisters. Um, it's, it's just, it's going to be a nightmare for yourself. Um, typically guys on these trips in Europe in general, you're walking anywhere from six to 12 miles per day. Okay. Europeans walk absolutely everywhere. You need to have comfortable shoes. Uh, okay. So if you're not used to walking, which I know in, uh, you know, in Oklahoma, especially, we do not walk that often. It's car in, car out all the time. So if you're not used to walking that much, 
you should probably start to walk a little bit prior to the trip. It will definitely be a lot easier for you if you have already have a couple weeks of walking under your belt, okay? Um, guys, you're going to need to bring a, a quick dry shower towel. Don't bring a big thick towel. The reason is because the big thick towels are going to retain too much water halfway through the trip. Your towel is going to smell like wet dog mildew and it just won't be good for you. So uh, bring a quick dry towel, one that can dry very quickly. Uh, the places where we're staying, they do offer towel uh, rentals. So you can rent a towel for like two euros. No problem there. That's fine. Um, but don't rely on that. Many times they'll say, oh, sorry, we gave out all the towels already, or oh, sorry, um, the laundry arrives tomorrow, or sorry, we don't do that anymore. Make sure you have a backup, okay? You're going to need a reusable water bottle, so a Nalgene bottle, a collapsible water bottle, um, you know, whatever you have. Um, I like the collapsible ones because they take up less space in your bag. Um, but get a reusable water bottle. The water's paddable all throughout Italy. It's uh, widely available, especially in Rome. So um, instead of having to buy bottled water and wasting additional plastic, um, reuse the tap water. It's delicious. It's good. It comes directly from the mountains. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically that bottled water that you're buying is the same water that you're getting out of the tap. Okay. And the, uh, the tap water is always cold. It's incredible. Uh, you'll see that in Rome. Um, you're also going to need to bring a little combo lock or padlock, nice and small, so you can lock up your locker in the uh, in the dormitory room. Um, I recommend combo because uh, you can just remember the combination. You don't have to worry about a key. Okay. Um, you definitely want to bring a camera. If you do like to journal, if you like to keep a travel journal, I highly recommend it. I like to do so when I travel. I like to keep notes. I like to uh, write down funny stories and things. And it's a great thing to flip back through later on, you know, if you're bored and um, or if you want to remember that trip well. It really brings back, really brings the trip back to life uh, in ways that uh, photos can't. So um, yeah, I would highly, I'd highly suggest a little journal to keep uh, funny notes or to write down, uh, you know, funny phrases or uh, if you're practicing your Italian, you know, things that you're learning. If you want to, you know, try to, um, you know, try to impress the locals and order in Italian and stuff. Definitely, highly recommend doing that. They love it. Um, two of my favorite things for traveling: wet wipes and hand sanitizer. I think they're the best in the world. Uh, if you get off a long flight, you feel all sticky and nasty. A little wet wipe bath, you're good to go. Uh, if you're using public transportation, your hands feeling sticky, whatever, uh, put a little hand sanitizer on there. You're good to go. You can eat some good Italian street food. So wet wipes, hand sanitizer, I highly recommend. Uh, now, guys, since we're gonna be um, <clears throat> carrying our bags onto the plane, you know, at least the first the coming over to Italy. Um, you're going to need travel size toiletries. Okay. So, uh, no liquids over 3.4 ounces. They're going to give you a quart size bag or you provide your own quart size bag and you have to fill that up with 3.4 ounce, uh, containers. Now, um, if you don't want to buy the prepackaged, uh, you know, the prepackaged ones, the ones that are already, you know, that are already the shampoos and stuff like that, that are already um, ready to go, then you can buy the little uh, the little bottles and fill them up with your own products. Okay, um, basically you can typically fit about ten of those little three point four ounce uh, bottles in a quart sized bag. Okay, um, Italy they have everything that you'd be looking for uh, that you would have back home. So uh, in in most cases. So uh, if you do forget something or if you do need to go to the store and get, you know, some razors or some additional shampoo or body wash or whatever, then um, it won't be a problem. We'll take you over there for sure. Um, small trash can liner bags, guys. Um, I recommend these for separating dirty clothes from clean clothes, wet clothes from dry clothes, etc. Additionally, you might want to bring a uh, like a gallon size Ziploc bag to keep your uh, phone and stuff in in case one day you're out and there's a ton of rain. You get completely soaked through. This actually happened to us in Rome last year. Um, you know, um, you don't have to worry about your electronics being uh, getting uh, getting wet and getting ruined. Yeah, so it's uh, it's always good to travel with one waterproof Ziploc gallon size bag. Okay, it'd be good. Uh, bring a couple black and white copies of your passport. That way, in the case that you do lose your passport on the trip, we can at least get you to the embassy and expedite the process. It will go much quicker if you have a black and white copy. Okay. Um, in addition to that, guys, I, if you are a student, I recommend that you bring a, a school ID. You can definitely get significant discounts on um, lots of entrances to places. 
um, even meals and uh, a lot of pubs and uh, bars and stuff like that will have a uh, food and drink specials for students as well. So um, if you are a student, bring your school ID. You're going to be, you guys are going to be having so much fun and so busy anyway. There's a ton of stuff already included in your program. Um, but like if there are extra things that you want to go do, you know, we want to make sure you experience that. So we'll make sure that you're, you know, never bored and that during your free time, you have plenty of options. Um, but a school ID will come in handy for sure. Now, guys, very, very important. Um, you know, in Europe, uh, they have higher voltage. They're at 220. We're at 120. So um, you need to make sure you have two options here. Um, one, make sure that your um, your uh, electric, your chargers that you have for your phones, your cameras, stuff like that, make sure that it already has a built-in converter in it. You can know that by looking at the part that you plug into the wall, the charger, it will say if it can handle 100 to 240, okay? It will say that on there. If it doesn't say that, then you're going to probably need to buy a, uh, a converter anyway. Guys, you can get these awesome international converters um, that have all of the adapters, the worldwide adapters. It has like six different adapters on it, and it's a converter. You can get those for like 10 or 15 bucks. You can get them online. You can get them at Radio Shack. You can get them at Best Buy. You can get them at Target, at Walmart, um, any, any of these places you can get these at. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if your chargers do already have a built-in converter and it says that it can handle 100 to 240 or whatever, then all you're going to need is this right here. And this is a European adapter. So um, you notice how the end is different than um, what you use here in the States. So um, you just plug your device into that and then you plug that into the wall. Now, this won't convert. This adapter will not convert anything, okay? So if you don't have a built-in converter, but you have one of these little adapters that cost $2 and you plug it in and you put it in the wall, you're going to have an expensive firework show and knock out the power in the building and then uh, the manager is going to go yell at Francesco. So uh, don't do that. Make sure you check your um, devices and everything prior to the trip, okay? Um, ladies, uh, hair dryers um, and hair straighteners, those are the ones that are notorious for knocking out the power as well as getting fried and basically just blowing up. So um, definitely a lot of the places we stay, they, they will – provide that to you with a deposit. You give them five euro or something like that, and then they'll lend you the hair dryer or the straightener. Um, if, uh, if you don't want to rely on that and uh, you really, really need it, then look for a travel size one and bring that because it will use less energy, therefore uh, reducing your chances of um, you know frying your electronic device. Okay. Um, and please, before you plug anything in the wall, just double check, okay? Double check because there's always one traveler that does it. So try not to be that one traveler, okay? Guys, this is your travel checklist right here. I need you to take care of all this stuff prior to the trip, okay? Um, I'm going to send you an email with in the morning, tomorrow morning, with all of this information electronically. In addition, there will be two attachments. One will be the medical form. One will be the release form. We need you to fill out both of those and send us the electronic copy back. Your medical form in case there's an emergency um, and you're unconscious, for example, we need to take you to the hospital. We need to know of any kind of uh, allergies to medication, any kind of pre-existing conditions that we need to know about. We need to know about this stuff. Now, it stays 100% confidential. It will only be uh, taken out and looked at in the case of an emergency. And then after the trip, it's completely destroyed. So uh, we, we delete it and we empty the trash. That's what I mean by destroyed. So um, if you um, – uh, we, we need to know anything that you think that we need to know about, we need to know about. And you'll have the form asking all the questions so you can fill that out there. Um, you need a passport. If you do not have a passport yet, you're going to have to expedite it. Um, you need to take care of that ASAP first thing tomorrow. If you do not have a passport, go get it taken care of. Okay. Normal passport costs 120 lasts for 10 years. Expedited passports probably going to run about 250, if not more, hopefully not more. Hopefully all of you already have that. Okay. Um, very important guys. Let me change the dates here real quick. Sorry. You guys are May 22 to, um, June one. One second. You need to notify your bank that you're going to be out of the country from May 22nd to June 1st. This is because if you don't, they will freeze your debit card, okay? They'll think that it's fraud. They'll freeze it. You won't be able to use your card. We'll have to wait for the bank to open up. Remember, they're seven hours behind us. 
and then you have to pay for international calling, blah, blah, blah. And you have to go through all the steps that you could have taken care of here at home domestically without stress. So make sure you call your bank. Let them know you're going to be in Italy from May 22nd to June 1st. And make sure that they put a note on your account that uh, you're out of the country and not to block your card. Okay? That is the best way to do it. Now that we're talking about cards, okay? Debit card and or extra credit card. Okay? Guys, now that we're talking about debit cards, please do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do not bring over a bunch of U.S. cash as you're spending money. Don't bring that over with you in hopes of exchanging that um, for two reasons. The first reason, you put yourself at risk. You put yourself at risk of losing all your spending money, misplacing it. Secondly, you put yourself at risk for um, uh, being a target, getting tick, uh, p uh, pickpocketed. Excuse me. And the main reason is when you do go and you exchange your money um, at these uh, exchange places, you're getting the worst possible commission rate, the worst possible exchange rate ever. They're charging you high commissions. Um, the, compared to the international exchange rate, you're completely getting ripped off. You're losing a ton of money. Right now, the euro and dollar are so close to one another. It's never been this close. It's the perfect time to go travel in Europe because now it is affordable. Um, don't lose that affordability by having to pay high commission fees to these um, these little shops. These little shops are in business. They afford to have this little office because you were giving them money to have it, okay? So the best thing to do, and also that goes for don't go to the bank here in the States and get a bunch of euros before the trip and bring a bunch of euros over there. You're doing the same thing. You're paying high commission fees, you're getting a bad exchange rate, and you're also putting yourself at risk of losing or getting pickpocketed, okay? The best thing that you can do is go and use the local ATMs. That's the first stop we make. We take you to local ATM. You can make direct withdrawal right there. You have euros directly in your hand, directly in your pocket. It's good. Additionally, you can um, decide how much you get out. So you don't have to have you know 300 euro or however much you have for your spending money all on you at once. You can say, hey, you know what? I only want 80 euro or I want 60 euro or whatever. Okay? Now, you have to remember that by making an international um, transaction like that, an international withdrawal, there will be a small charge on your account that's typically 3 to $5, uh, depending on your bank, for an international transaction fee. Okay? 3 to $5. Now, there are a lot of banks, though, that um, don't charge you that, that reimburse you for that. I'll give you an example of one in Oklahoma, First Fidelity Bank. First Fidelity Bank doesn't charge international transactions or international withdrawal fees. So um, check with your bank. See if they offer something similar to that. Okay? Worst case scenario, you're going to be making three to possibly four transactions throughout the duration of the trip. So you're talking about spending $12 to $20 at the most on um, international transactions. And that's still of way better value than exchanging your money at one of the exchange places. Okay. So please, please, please don't bring a bunch of US cash with you in hopes of exchanging it. All right. I'll stop my rant on that one. I apologize. Um, now, we've just seen it happen way too many times. Uh, guys, adequate money for the trip. We recommend 300 to 500. You can do it for much cheaper than that, okay? If you are on a budget, if you're on a limited budget, email me. Let me know what your budget is, and I will help you plan accordingly. I'm a very frugal traveler. There are tons of great ways to do Italy on the cheap. I will give you a lot of examples. I'll give you a couple right now. Instead of going to a restaurant to eat um, your um, to eat for lunch and things like this, you know, save that for dinner maybe. During the day, guys, you can get excellent panino. You can get great little sandwiches on the street. You can get awesome pizza to go. Um, you know, you can get great food for, you know, anywhere from three euro to, you know, five euro, have a nice solid meal. Now you guys have daily breakfast included every day. So if you are on a budget, there's great places to get sandwiches, to get pizza. You can go directly to the butcher shop. You pick whatever, you know, um, ever cured, cured meat you want, the prosciutto, etc. They'll fill it up for you. They'll stuff it with mozzarella, with vegetables and everything like that. You walk out of there, you can grab a beer or something like that, and you can go sit in the square and have a nice lunch. 
that is what Italians do. That's what they do all the time. Everybody grabs a little sandwich. They grab a drink. They go sit in the main square. They sit on the steps. They eat outside, okay? Now, if you want to go have good Italian food at uh, for dinner, obviously. Now, you already have three meals included, um, quality big meals where you pick whatever you want off the menu. But um, if you do want to go get um, – you know, go out for extra meals. Obviously, you're in Italy. You for sure want to do that. You know, you're probably looking at probably about 10 euros for like a nice plate of pasta. Now, that's really good pasta. You can for sure get um, uh, cheaper stuff, but it's not going to be that quality what you're looking for. Um, the uh, the hostel that we stay in Florence, uh, Archi Rossi, makes uh, they they do they do really good food for five euros. So it's very budget conscious. It's for backpackers, it's for travelers. So uh, guys, there's tons of affordable options. Email me your situation. I will help you out. Uh, Francesco, he's also super frugal. Um, you know, uh, we were both uh, traveling students. Uh, you know, we still are. So uh, we know how to do it on the cheap, and we'll show you how to do it on the cheap. Okay. So just email me your situation. Um, you need your trip materials from professors, art students. If you're going to be painting and drawing, etc., cetera, um, you know, what better place to do it than Italy? Uh, make sure you bring your, uh, make sure you bring your supplies. Okay. Um, guys, we've already talked about packing. Keep it light. Follow our recommendations. You'll definitely be thankful. Um, and, uh, you're going to need to provide your loved ones with the Italy contact information. It is on the, uh, the last page here. So um, in um, in Rome, you guys uh, don't don't pay attention to uh, this right here. I'm going to change this actually because you guys are staying at uh, Hotel Papa Germano. Sorry, this was for another Italy trip a second ago. Let's change this real quick. I'll uh, I'll fill that in later. And then in Florence, this is Hostel uh, Archirosi. Um, and then this is my number guys. So if you have any kind of emergencies at all, you can call me on this number, leave a voice message. I'll get an instant email and then I'll call you back. Now, uh, Francesco will, um, as soon as you arrive, he'll provide you your, uh, survival sheet. So you'll have his mobile number, you'll have the numbers for the places we're staying, and you'll have the emergency numbers and the addresses, et cetera, of where we're staying. So he'll provide you all of that once you get on ground, and there'll be another like on-ground briefing as well. Um, but uh, in the meantime, uh, you have all of this information at your uh, disposal. Now, I'm going to send you all of this, okay, guys? Um, so you don't have to worry about that. You'll receive this in the morning. Now what I would like to do is open it up to uh to q a okay so basically now is the time to ask as many questions as you have about anything um go ahead and uh, ask them now so uh if you guys if you want to be able to speak you need to turn on your um the little green speaker and unmute yourself okay did you have any questions Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, I think he can hear you. Yeah, yeah. these I, I, are on. You. There are no dumb questions. Go for it. <laughs> okay. My sister, Lindsay, is a tattoo fanatic, and she has small fudge sleeves of both arms. Is that offensive in Italy when we're going to be walking around all the oh. museums in different places, or should she be fine? Oh, she'll totally be fine. Um, yeah. Italy's got lots of um, lots eccentric. of tattooed people, lots of eccentric people. Exactly, lots of artsy people as well. Um, now she will need to, and that's something I'm going to add in here. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I, I need the, I need the skirt me. Me. Yeah, exactly. One Her shoulders. Appropriate clothing, guys, for um, churches and cathedrals. Okay. So um, that means no shorts, and that means uh, no shoulders, okay? You can, bring a shawl. Uh, you can bring a little shawl, a little scarf, and you can just wrap yourself up in that. That's fine. Um, but, yeah, no, she'll totally be okay with the tattoos. And um, she can uh, – we, we both, Francesca and I both have friends with tattoo artists there, so if she wants to get the extra one, we can help her out with that. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to ask. I thought that's what you were going to ask. I thought you were going to say she wants a souvenir from Italy. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, um, let's keep going, guys. Other questions? 
Um, should we, if I don't have a chip on my debit card, I've heard that chips are very popular over there. Should mm -hmm. I have one? Yeah, that's a great question. Great question. Yeah, guys, um, chips are preferred in Europe. So um, a lot of a lot of times they will do swipe, but sometimes you may run into a switch a situation where um, they only accept cards that have chip on them. So um, I will. I would recommend. Great question, guys. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend um, trying to get a card that has a chip. And I think that most uh, cards, like as of um, this past year, most of the new cards are issued and have chips in them. Yeah, I, I don't think they do in Oklahoma. Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't, and I couldn't get on the metro in Paris. So okay. it's a pretty big nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> get a um, – contact your bank. You still got. You still have a good uh, three weeks before yeah. the trip. Contact your bank and um, get a a card that has a, a chip. And I'm gonna add that right here. Yes, request card. All right, great question. Any other questions, guys? Can you I was just going to advise that they get some kind of portable power for their phones because a lot of students were kind of in shock over the fact that they're used to being able to plug in all day and we were walking around so much last year that there wasn't time to plug in. So what would you say about that? They had kind of a portable um, power source for their phones because yeah. they were using it basically to take photos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, get, you can get one of those little USB keys, you know, like uh, one of those um, one of those little small uh, backup battery chargers, you know, those little um, rectangular ones. You can okay. you can get one of those guys, for example. Um, and then, yeah, you know, you're gonna be able to charge your phone um, during the night while you're at the hostel or whatever. Um, and then, you know, most of the other time, I would just turn off all of the unnecessary stuff on your phone. Um, so that way it doesn't eat up your um, it doesn't eat up your battery. Now while while we're on phones, um, we should talk about um, we should talk about like data plans and uh, international calling and stuff. Okay, um, that's a common question we get asked. Is like you know what kind of calling plan should I get or whatever. My answer to that is don't get one. Um, deny access, roaming, the duration of the trip. And instead, just use the Wi-Fi and all of the free applications that we have access to nowadays. So that's like your Viber, your WhatsApp, your uh, Skype, your FaceTime, your Facebook call. I can name a dozen where you can call people for free with Wi-Fi now. So um, if you are looking for something affordable, I've heard that texting plans can be um, – they can be affordable texting plans or whatever. But I can yeah. – I cannot advise you on a um, international calling plan because I don't do it. I just kind of local it. SIM card wherever I'm going, and then I use a local number. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and also, guys, just while we're on that, I think you, I think you want to try to separate yourself from home a little bit, right? While you're over there. In my opinion, that's that's my that's my. Uh, my way of travel. I like to separate myself a little bit from what's going on at home, and I want to be a hundred percent in the place where I'm going. So, um, you know that 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 separation might be nice. That's just an idea. I'm throwing that out there. I, I believe there was a question. Somebody was asking a question, and then we had one that jumped in. One second. Fly on toast with y'all. We also have to Yes, yes, Mara. You will have an airport pickup, of course. We will be waiting for you. Uh, what, about, what about we fly back out? What? How are we getting to the? Are we being? Um, are we supposed to find our way to the airport? No, no, no. You guys will. Be, you guys will be escorted to and from. Uh, okay. From uh, Fumicino. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you hear that, Mara? Okay, great, cool. Um, yeah. Any other questions, guys, about anything? Um, I know that um, in a fashionable sense, Italians um, are more on like, the extreme side and more high-end side. Would yeah. jean shorts even be appropriate to wear on tour guides and all that, or what would be a better attire for a woman to wear? 
Oh yeah, I think jean, I think jean shorts would be fine. Italians are super are super um, relaxed and um, very 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 friendly, beautiful people. Nobody will like really, you know. Um, I think as long as you're not wearing like sweatpants and stuff around, then uh, it's then, then it's okay. I mean, they wear absolutely everything. I mean, they they really. Uh, that, yeah, yes, they are known for their high end fashion and stuff like that, but that's not the majority of the people. That's not how they uh, how they wear. And actually, a lot of Italians uh, actually really like um, American American fashion and things like this as well. So um, you know, uh, like like other than sweatpants, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I would I wouldn't worry about that too much. My my only concern would be if we're going to a church that day. And then you're wearing a tank top, and then you're going to need some way of covering both. So I would just keep that in mind. So I just wore skirts the entire time I was there last time. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't that way. I wasn't hot, but I wasn't worrying about not being able to get in. I mean, you could look at the schedule, too, and if we're not doing that that day, I think you'd be fine. But I would just exactly. say yeah. lengthwise, you might have an issue yep. if you wear the shorts, not fashion-wise. Yeah. 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 We'll, um, yeah, you, you might be popular. You might be popular with the guys with, uh, some short little, yeah. <laughs> you might attract attention too. <laughs> there's also a lot of tourists as, as much as there's Italians there, there's tourists from all over. So there's people dressed in every single way you could imagine. Yeah, for so sure. It's very international yeah, feeling. For sure. Um, you're not going to stand out necessarily as an American or tourist. Yeah. Um, the, the only other thing I would say is that they should be pretty aware of um, maybe pickpocketing and gypsies. Yeah. So as far as bags, I, I actually kept a smaller kind of travel bag that was closer to my body than putting everything in my backpack. So if someone did grab my bag, they wouldn't have my debit card, for instance. That's the important stuff, yeah. Yeah, so and that's, just, just be aware of where you put your passport, for instance. Yeah, guys, I mean uh, – uh, your guys, your guys' safety is the is um, our number one priority. So we, Francesca, will be constantly reminding you of you know, hey, be careful with stuff. You know, especially if you're on the metro, you need to have your stuff in your front pockets, things like this. We'll be constantly, okay. Um, okay. constantly reminding you um, because yes, it does. And you're you're 100 right. I mean, we had we had a girl that got pickpocketed, um, you know, last year on the metro. She wasn't paying attention. Somebody got into her bag, and then they hopped off at the next stop. You know, and we saw it too late. Um, fortunately, though, um, she—it was just her card. She didn't lose any money, so we were able to cancel it before they were able to do anything with it. You know, but uh, okay. that's just—that's definitely something uh, that you want to be. And that—that that goes like with any type of international travel, guys. You want to mm -hmm. al always be aware, even domestic travel. Um, you want to be aware of your uh, surroundings and your personal belongings. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That was very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, guys, if you have any other questions at all, email me, um, you know, email Professor Smyers as well, and we'll be able to answer all of your questions. Uh, that's what we're here for. Guys, on this um, sheet that I'm going to send you, uh, this uh, PDF, just please double check your names and make sure that they are spelled correctly on there, okay? So that way we don't have any... Um, we don't have any surprises at the airport. We want to try to fix everything before our departure. All right. Okay. Cool. And I'll send you guys, I'll send all this to you in the morning and uh, get ready. We're going to have an amazing trip. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're really looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. You're very welcome. Okay, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me. Have a good evening. Okay. Me too. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Ciao ragazzi. Buonasera. Ooh. Ciao, ciao, ciao.